Praise the Lord. It's Wednesday night. We're so thankful that you're gathering with us to get into the Word of God. I tell you what, God's Word is good. And God's Word is good because God is good. Praise the Lord. Let's pray as we get started tonight. Father, we love you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We thank you for the privilege and opportunity we have, Father, to study your Word tonight. And Father, we ask that you give us revelation knowledge from your Word. We thank you for helping us understand your principles and precepts, Father, and not just understand them, but we thank you for helping us to apply them to our lives. And Father, we thank you <clears throat> for the privilege of being doers of the Word and not hearers only. We thank you, Lord, that when we do your Word, <clears throat> your Word says we'll be blessed in our deeds and blessed in our doing. And so, Father, we thank you and praise you, Lord, for the Word of God. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for everything that's going to be accomplished tonight in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, tonight I'm going to start. Uh, those who know me are going to really laugh because I'm going to start with an illustration of my favorite basketball player again. And of course, those of you who know, know me know that is Michael Jordan. And I'm certainly a Michael Jordan fan. I had his original pair of Air Jordans when I was in high school. And one of the things that made Michael Jordan great was his ability uh, to hit big and game-winning shots. I mean, he won many, many games taking the last second shot. You know, but what enabled him to be able to hit those type of high-pressure shots and those last-minute clutch shots? What enabled him to do that? You know, <clears throat> it helps if you have his skill and talent. <laughs> That's one thing, right? His basketball brilliance certainly helped and, and put him in a position to do some of those things. However, there was something else that I want to focus on, and that something else was his ability to focus. His ability to focus. You know, in the last seconds of a game, there are a ton of distractions. I mean, particularly for him, every defender on the floor was, was zeroed in on trying to stop him. Then you had, if you were in the opposing arena, you had the fans yelling and screaming and many times hitting different, you know, loud sound devices to make loud noises. And sometimes you have music blaring. <clears throat> and so there was lots of different things going on. Then you had the officials there who were watching the game. And then you had the journalists and the photographers who were there and they were waiting to write about and photograph what you did or did not do, right? And all those things could certainly be distractions. And if you take your eyes off of the goal for one split second to look at any of those things, then you could miss the shot. But that's what enabled Michael Jordan to be successful in the clutch was his ability to focus. And that's what we want to talk to you tonight. Just a few minutes we'll have together tonight. We want to talk about focus. We've been in a series on moving forward. And we've talked about different things. We've talked about having a dream. We've talked about prayer. And tonight we're going to, we talked about priorities. Tonight we're going to talk about focus, right? And focus is not just true in being a success in basketball or last second shots. It's true of other sports and it's true of life. Focus, the ability to focus. Focus helps us keep moving forward. Focus, focus helps us keep moving forward. <clears throat> uh, tennis star Venus Williams said this, and I thought it was great. I don't focus on what I'm up against. I focus on my goals and I try to ignore the rest, right? And then I like something that Tony Robbins said. He said, your life is controlled by what you focus on. Think about that for a minute. Your life is controlled by what you focus on. So we're talking about the power of focus tonight. And so, as I say, we're in a series on moving forward, and we've seen from the Word of God that God wants us to move forward. He doesn't want us to become stagnant or complacent or passive. He wants us to move forward, to be proactive. And our text that we want to read tonight is taken from Philippians chapter 3. Philippians 3, we're going to read verses 12 through 14. Philippians 3, verses 12 through 14. And this is the Apostle Paul writing to the church at Philippi. He said, Not that I have already attained or I'm already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid a hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward. 
reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> I want you to notice that Paul said, reaching forward to those things that are ahead. <clears throat> you know, this is a powerful passage, but when you look at the history of this, it even takes on more uh, significance for us and, and improves our understanding of really what Paul is saying. But this passage, Paul, as I said, was writing to the church at Philippi, and this church, this area, this city, he had literally shed his blood at. Uh, he preached in the city of Philippi, and his critics got mad with him, and they seized him, they stripped him, they violently beat him, and then they threw him and Silas, his traveling companion, into prison. Uh, but you know what's powerful about this is that when he was there, Paul didn't. Paul said, "I'm not focusing on the past." Of course, he wasn't there when he wrote this, but he said, "I'm not focusing on the past." He said, "I'm not. I'm not focusing on my current conditions." You know, if he focused on his current condition, you know, when he was in prison, <laughs> that's not a good thing to focus on, right? He's beaten, he's whipped, he's stripped. You know, he's in prison. But Paul didn't focus on his past. Paul didn't focus on his current conditions. Paul did not even focus on his past successes. He didn't think about, well, you know, in the good old days, I did this. No, Paul said, I am reaching forward. I'm focused on reaching forward to the things that are ahead. And I want to share the fact that God is good. And God has some good things ahead for you in your life. <clears throat> Satan will always try to make us think the, the, the future is going to be bad, bad things on the way. But God is a God of hope. God is a God of faith. And God has good things in store for us. He wants to bless us. He wants to prosper us. He wants to use us for His glory in the kingdom of God. <clears throat> and you know what? Just like in my basketball illustration earlier, uh, it's easy to allow distractions to hinder us and hamper us from moving forward. Paul said, I'm moving forward. I'm not being restrained by the past. I'm moving forward. He was not going to allow distractions to get him off track. But in this life, distractions can come from many different places and many different sources to try to hinder us or hamper us from moving forward. And Paul said, I'm focused on reaching forward. He refused to allow his past to hinder his future. You know, <clears throat> uh, my grandmother lives in North Carolina, and she has a beautiful view outside of her kitchen, uh, kitchen area uh, where, they, where they eat, you know, their breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Right outside there, they have a beautiful view outside, and they can see the wild birds coming in, beautiful cardinals and blue jays and different birds, and, and we feed them, of course, so they come and, and eat there. Um, <clears throat> and, um, but also, we have some squirrels, right? And so the squirrels will come and they'll grab some of the food and they'll eat some food. But the interesting thing about the squirrels is not only do they eat it, but you can watch them and they'll go down and they'll bury some food, right? And so I was thinking about that. I want to give you some wisdom from the squirrels. And that is every squirrel knows there are some nuts that need to be buried. <laughs> every squirrel knows there are some nuts that need to be buried. And Paul said, forgetting the things that are behind. In other words, there's some things that need to be buried. We need to forget the past and move on ahead. You know, <clears throat> the founder of the Red Cross was a lady named Clara Barton. And once she was offended by a co-worker. Now, how many of you know that Jesus said offenses are going to come? But she was offended by a co-worker, but she quickly forgave her friend and moved on. Uh, years later, someone reminded Clara Barton of the incident and said, Don't you remember? No, Clara Barton re responded. She said, I distinctly recall forgetting that. Notice that. I distinctly recall forgetting that. There are things in our life that we need to distinctly recall forgetting. Right? Paul said, forgetting the things that are behind in other words, not allowing our past mistakes to hinder our future progress. Now, what are, what are some things that are in our past that we should forget? Well, how about guilt? How about guilt? Guilt is remembering a sin that's already been buried by the blood of Jesus. The Bible says in Romans 8, 1, there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus as long as we're walking in the Spirit. So not allowing guilt 
to, to plague our life today. Uh, also, bitterness. We need to root out any bitterness in, in life. The Bible says, you know, being careful so no root of bitterness can come in and defile us and defile others. But bitterness is remembering an offense that should be buried by the grace of God. And, you know, <clears throat> it's so encouraging to know that if you know Jesus Christ is your Savior, there is absolutely no reason to obsess over past failures. The Bible says if anyone is new in Christ, old things are passed away. We've been set free by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. So what should we focus on? We're talking about focusing tonight, but what should we focus on? We should focus on God's purpose. We should focus on God's priorities. We should focus on God's plans. And we should focus on God's prize. We know that God has a plan and priorities and a purpose, but God also has a prize for us. Notice what the Bible says in Philippians 3 and verse 14. Paul said, I press toward the goal for the prize, for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. You know, often we don't think about it, but there's a prize to be obtained for running and finishing our race. Not just running, but finishing our race. You know, we want to focus on the prize so we can hear, well done, good and faithful servant. I so I want to finish my race so I can hear the Lord say, well done, good and faithful servant. But you know, whoever finishes their race, Paul said, I finished my race. We can, I can finish my race. You can finish your race. And we can all have the Lord say to us, well done, good and faithful servant. You know, but when we're talking about prizes, you can see this in other places in the scripture too. Uh, Paul said when he finished his race, he would receive the crown of righteousness. The Bible says in, in 2 Timothy 4 verse 8, the crown of righteousness. And then Peter said we would receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. The crown of glory that does not fade away. See, focus enables us to fulfill God's purpose. It enables us to pursue God's priorities, follow God's plan, and receive God's prize. That's what focus does. So focus means I am zeroed in. I am zeroed in. You know, I grew up in North Carolina and I used to do a lot of hunting. I enjoyed hunting, you know, mostly small game things, you know, doves and duck and quail and squirrels and rabbits and different things like that. Um, <clears throat> but when you buy a new rifle, particularly a rifle that has a scope on it, one of the things is you have to zero that scope in with the rifle. And that simply means that you have to adjust the scope so that the target is in the crosshairs, right? You have to adjust the rifle with the scope to make sure that you, when you shoot and you line up that target, you're going to hit it. And so we'll, we need to zero in with laser light focus on God's target for our life. What is that target? Well, two things very simply are we should be a, our focus and should be a target in our life is Christ's likeness, becoming like Christ. That's one of the reasons you were created. You were predestined to be conformed into His image, to become like Him. And so one of our focuses and our goals should be to become Christ-like. And that should be an endeavor we work on every single day of our life. Amen. Christ-likeness and fulfilling God's plan. God has a plan for your life. And sometimes people say, well, I don't know what God's plan is, but I want to let you know this. The ignorance of God's plan does not indicate the absence of God's plan. Just because we don't know what the plan of God is doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Matter of fact, the, the very reason that you exist is indication and proof that there is a plan for your life because God does not make accidents. Praise the Lord. So when we talk about focus, we want to be focused on Christ's likeness and fulfilling God's plan for our life. And, you know, as we talk about focus, I think this is such an applicable message because it's so easy to become distracted in this life. There's so many things pulling from this world. Jesus talked about the parable of the sower. He said, the deceitfulness of riches, the lust from other things come in and it chokes the word and it becomes unprofitable. So there's a ton of distractions in this world. Just like I was talking about in the basketball, there's the other defenders, there's the fans, there's the referees, there's the journalists. In life, we have so many different things. It can be a distraction from us pursuing Christ-likeness and pursuing God's plan for our life. And so we want to be focused. There's an old Russian proverb I want to share with you. It says, if you chase two rabbits, you'll not catch either one. If you chase two rabbits, you'll not catch either one, right? 
So what is the one thing that you need to focus on to become more like Christ? Think about that right now in your own life. What is the one thing that you need to focus on to become more like Christ? What is the one thing you need to focus on to fulfill the plan of God? God's plan for your life. What is the thing that you need to focus on to fulfill the plan of God for your life? And you know what? Sometimes focusing on one thing is exactly what we need. And God knew the power of one thing. And you know what? A real interesting study is if you look up, you know, do a, a Bible search on one, one thing. God wanted us to know how important one thing is, so He talked about it on several occasions. Um, for instance, Psalms 27 verse 4 says, One thing I've desired of the Lord. Notice what He said, one thing. One thing I've desired of the Lord. Say that with me, one thing. One thing I've desired of the Lord, <clears throat> that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire into His temple. And then Mark 10, 21, Jesus told the rich young ruler, then Jesus, looking at him, loved him. Did you know you're loved by God tonight? Please remember that and know that. Then Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, one thing you lack, one thing you lack. And then the story about Martha, Mary and Martha. Notice what Jesus said in Luke 10, 42. But one thing is needed. Think about that. One thing is needed. One thing is needed. Sometimes we allow a bunch of other things to take the place of the one thing that's needed. But Jesus said one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part which will not be taken away from her. And then in our text, Philippians 3, verse 13. Look at this in the New Living Translation. It says, No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing. I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. The phrase one thing means to dedicate yourself and your daily activities to the wonderful will of God. I want to read something to you, and I just want you to listen. But it talks about the power of focus, and it kind of brings together some of the things we're talking about tonight. Uh, this was written by Kent Hughes. Single-mindedness, the ability to focus, to shut everything out when necessary, is the key to success, is the key to success in virtually every area of life. It is the essential ingredient uh, of the maniac virtue of basketball heroes like Michael Jordan and Tim Duncan, or golf great Jack Nicholas, or the creative musical genius of Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. But here, the focus is not a basketball rim, a flag fluttering, fluttering on a distant green or a musical score. It is Christ Himself and how to please Him. The single-minded dis disciple is in the world, but he does not get entangled in the world. Think about that again. The single-minded disciple is in the world, but he does not get entangled by the world. He avoids anything that will hinder single-minded dedication to his master. And you know what? That brings me to another important point that we're talking about when we talk about keep moving forward, and that is staying focused on God's purpose, staying focused on God's plan, staying focused on God's priorities, and staying focused on God's prize, which He wants to give us when we fulfill His will. Amen. So I want to ask you tonight, how are you doing with your focus? How is your focus? Are you focused on God's plan? Are you focused on Christ's likeness? Are you focused on God's priorities? Are you focused on those things? As I said, so many things can come into our life and creep in and get us off track. But I want us to examine our life tonight. What changes do I need to make? What's the one thing? Let's just take one thing. What is the one thing I need to change to become more Christ-like or to fulfill God's will for my life? Let me pray for you tonight. Father, I thank you for each and every one gathered with us. We thank you for teaching us about focus tonight. And we thank you, Lord, that just as the Apostle Paul said, I focus on this one thing. Father, we focus tonight on becoming more like your son, Jesus Christ. We focus on your priorities. We focus on your plans. And Father, I pray for each and every one gathering with us tonight. I pray, Lord, any areas that we need to see, that we need to change, you reveal them to us tonight. And Father, we dedicate ourselves to making the changes necessary to become more like you and to fulfill your plan 
and to embrace your priorities because we know that when we lose our life for you, we gain it. And Father, we thank you. Thank you for your favor, your grace, and your anointing empowering us to move forward in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, we want to say, Pastor Samantha, and I want to say thank you so much for gathering with us tonight. It is the joy of our heart to be able to share the Word of God with you, to give you information from God's Word to help you grow, to help you become more like Him, and to see your lives get better and better as you walk out His plan and purpose for your life, because it is good. Amen. Well, it's investment time into the kingdom of God. There's uh, different ways you can give that are up on the screen. But however you give, we want to say thank you for your faithful and consistent giving that empowers us to minister the Word of God. Our joy is to lead people to a committed relationship with Jesus, which means reaching people with the gospel and helping make disciples. Uh, Jesus said, go on to all the world, preach the gospel. And he said, make disciples. And that is our goal, to make disciples. And we love sharing the Word to help people grow and become more like Him. You know, I want, to, I want to also say that as we give into the gospel, God promises to bless us. The Bible says very simply in Luke 6, 38, give and it shall be given. Let me say that to you, give and it shall be given. You know, the Bible likens sowing, um, you know, natural seed. Uh, it uses the same illustration for giving, right? He says when you give finances, it's like sowing a seed. And we know the tithe opens the windows of heaven. And then when we give an offering, that's considered seed that God will multiply back to us. But when we give, God says, give and it shall be given. Not it might, not it could. It says, give and it shall. I like that. That is definite. It shall be given to you. Amen. Press down, running over, shaking together. Amen. Hey, let me pray for you tonight. Father, we thank you and praise you for the opportunity to give. I thank you, Lord, for blessing every gift, blessing every giver tonight. Thank you for doing supernatural things for us. Thank you, Father, for debts being canceled. Thank you for retirements being funded. Thank you, Father, for houses being paid, cars being paid. Thank you, Father, for your blessing and favor. And thank you for using us to be a blessing because your word says it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to give tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Finally, we want you to know we love you so very much. If the message has been a blessing to you, like it, share it. Help us get the Word of God out. And until we are able to share the Word of God with you again, please know we love you and are praying for you. God bless you. Mm -hmm.